Welcome. I'm Dr. Barinholtz. I'm joining Dr. Lippi. We're going to discuss <coughs> stapedectomy versus stapedotomy. Dr. Lippi will start this review. Bill? Stapedectomy, as you know, was the original operation. And then, let's see, probably the early 80s. About then. Stapedotomy entered the picture and became popular. At that time, we did a series of three groups of patients. We did 75 consecutive cases of uh, where we removed the entire foot plate, another 75 where we did a partial removal, another 75 where we removed a very small amount of the foot plate, comparable to a stapedotomy. We then went ahead and did the procedure, and it was the stapedotomy comparable operation. We did use a tissue graft, and some people in stapedotomy use tissue, and some people don't, but we did. And here's what we found. We found, first of all, that the 4,000 frequency loss is a myth, that our results in a partial stapedectomy or a total stapedectomy were just as good at 4,000 as a stapedotomy. We found that the uh, average uh, air frequency following surgery was pretty much the same in all three procedures. But we found that the partial or the total stapedectomy had a much higher rate of overclosure than the other two procedures. And we get a lot of overclosures. So for that reason, we elected to stick with the partial stapedectomy. Now, I always had some problem with the theory in the first place. My problem was this. I think it was Dr. McGee uh, from Detroit who did the first writing about stapedotomy. And Dr. McGee, when he wrote the paper on stapedotomy, was a very good surgeon who had done at least 1,000, 2,000, maybe 3,000 stapedectomies. So when he looked at his results from stapedotomy, they were better than stapedectomy, but they were done at a sequence where he was a very, very experienced surgeon. That was one. Number two, in people who do stapedotomy, do them on the easy cases. If they cannot do a stapedotomy because it's a difficult case with difficult anatomy, they do a stapedectomy. So obviously, if they take all their results in stapedotomy, the easy cases, and put them next to stapedotomy, the, or, or to next to partial stapedectomy, which are the difficult cases, they're going to get a better result in stapedotomy. So I never really put a lot of credence in their results. So our, our conclusion has been that a partial stapedectomy is really just about a stapedotomy, isn't it? I mean, that's the amount of foot plate that you've removed, that we always use a tissue graft. I'm reminded in this, in this of John Shea. Twice at an otosclerosis study group over the years, he was asked to make a comment. <laughs> and once he stood up and said, use a speculum holder, and he sat down. And the next time, a few years later, he was asked to make some comments after 50 years of stapedectomy, and he said, use a tissue graft, and he sat down. My feelings exactly. Bill, as a uh, otologic surgeon that started about a decade ago with your training, uh, I think that's the most critical principle that I learned having gone through residency and that not being emphasized. And it's been a tremendous help to me and I think uh, my patient's recovery by following these principles. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on a discussion of stapedectomy and stapedotomy.